Welcome to Kids Camp. It's time again for Critters in Creation. And it's wonderful to be part of God's creation, isn't it? Yes! I'm Keith Nelson from Camp Kalakwa, Florida, where all of our critters are visiting from this week. And by the way, we have seen some unique critters so far. Some have been cold-blooded reptiles. Or, well, today we have some warm-blooded mammals for you. Now, some mammals are soft and cuddly, and you can cuddle them, and they might even purr, or they might even lick your face if it's a puppy. But the mammal that I have for you probably isn't one you're going to want to cuddle with very much. And so, well, let's just see. My helper today is Dean, and he's probably wearing a pair of gloves for a reason. And those gloves are going to help protect him from God's design of this animal. One of the designs on this one is between three and 5,000 little spikes, little pokey spikes. And as he brings it right up here, he's going to set him right on the table. And his name is Mo. Can you say hi, Mo? Hi, Mo. Yeah, Mo. No, Mo is a hedgehog. That's right. Now there's European hedgehogs and there's African hedgehogs. And Mo here is of the African variety. Africa is a big continent filled with lots of countries. And he probably is more along the lines of Somalia or Egypt. And he will run along the hedgerows and bury himself in the dry leaves. And when he goes to sleep at night, he curls up. Now he's wiggly now because we woke him up in the middle of his night. That means he's nocturnal. Do you know what nocturnal means? What does nocturnal mean, Lionel? Um, like he did not get enough sleep. I'm like he didn't get I'm enough just, sleep? All right. How about Sophia? You have more information on nocturnal? Um, that he sleeps in the day and he's active in the night. He sleeps during the day and he's active in the night. That's very much true for this fellow. And there's something else. Let me see if I can get someone over here to recognize something else when you look at him. What's your name here, Leah? Leah, as you look at his eyes, what do you observe? What color are they? Red. Red? You ever see too many creatures with blood red eyes? No. No, does anyone know what he, that means? Let's see if Jackson knows what red eyes and white body means. Jackson, he's all I don't white. Know. Yes. He looks funny. Yeah, he looks funny, I don't know. doesn't he? So we'll all touch him in a minute and get to pet him. If you pet him from the front to the back, he won't poke you. Don't pet him near the face. That means, yes, Caden. Um, does that heat business? Yeah, well, he can sense heat because. He's a mammal, and he knows where it's warm, but he doesn't have the heat vision that the snake does. Yes, Cadence. Is that albino? That is correct. Cadence has nailed it. This is an albino hedgehog and a wiggly one at that. This albino hedgehog is unique and special because only one in a 100,000 are born albino. And the beautiful thing about that is that this one was born right at Camp Kalakwa, and we felt real blessed. Yes, Lionel. I thought monkeys only can be albino. Isn't that interesting? So monkeys can be albino, people can be albino, mammals of all types can come in albino type. That means they don't have melanin. Melanin is the protein that makes your hair darker. The more you have, the darker the hair. And as you look around, some of you boys and girls have blondish hair, some have brown or even black hair. That means you have a lot of mel melanin. The melanin is the protein that gives the color of the eyes. And since poor Mo here doesn't have any color for his eyes, his eyes look red because what you're seeing is just the blood that flows through behind. But that doesn't mean he's blind, he can still see. So we're gonna start over here and let Cadence pet him just a little bit from front to back while I still tell you about him. And I see some of you remember that if you don't wanna pet an animal, you just fold your arms on your chest. That's a good indication to me to leave it alone. 
And this little wiggly guy, he's probably hungry and wants, what do you think he eats, Miss? and berries he does like fruits and berries and he does eat bugs do you like to eat bugs uh, no. no no you're not a bug eater that's good I don't know that your parents would want you munching too many bugs Madison's turn all right so Miss Allie are you getting to pet him there can you speak into the microphone and tell us what it feels like feels weird weird okay rough and pokey a little, yeah. it'd be pokey if you petted him the backwards or the wrong way. Here you go, Ezra. Now, he has big ears, doesn't he? I want to touch him with I can't his, do it. He, his top spikes are almost. Okay, all right. We'll give you another oh, shot. No, so, please. I want to touch him. You want to touch him? Oh, yeah, but you can't touch his face, okay? Please, yeah. Please, please. Just his back, okay, please. mister? Here we go, Miss Faith. There you go, you got him. All right, so. How can, they, how can they protect themselves? Good question. Hadassah wants to know how they can protect themselves. They have a soft underbelly, soft fur like a kitty under the belly. And the thing is, when they want to go and protect themselves, they can get completely in a ball and make themselves very hard to bite because no animal wants to bite their little spikes. Yes, Allie. How long do they live? They live to be seven to ten years old. That's probably younger than some of you. And so they don't live too long at all. You'll be much older than they will ever be. How, how, what are some of their adaptions like in the wild? Sure. So what they can do in the wild is they can run and they can hunt and they can find all kinds of little bugs in the bushes or things to things to come along and, and bother them and the truth is that um, this little guy has a special secret he can eat toxic plants and then spit the toxins on his spines and make himself more dangerous Isn't that a neat little trick they think it also wards off other animals from smelling them and finding them and um, yes how old is he right now? Thank you, sir. So Jackson, I think he's three years old right now. And his name is Mo because his brothers and sisters are eeny, meeny, and miny. But there's another thing he does real well. And that is that when he wants to go to sleep during the day, what he can do is he can curl up with his back facing out. And that way, while he's sleeping, he can trust that nothing will come and bother him because all his spikes are sticking out protecting him while he sleeps like your blanket does for you and gives you protection at night so the thing in that that reminds me of yes miss cadence um, so like are his spikes always folded back or they do they can they pop he up? can stand them up especially when he curls in a ball and maybe you can hear him going ch -ch and chuffing a little bit so when he's real upset or nervous he can hiss and jump and kind of stab with his spikes. Yeah, so this guy reminds me of another story of trust. One night, some men were afraid again, and the same men in the same boat probably, as the story of Jesus sleeping in the back of the boat, but this time Jesus wasn't in their boat. And they were scared because the storms had come again. And this time in... Instead of being able to wake up Jesus in the back of the boat, they just panicked some more. And those poor men didn't know it, but they were about to get even more scared because they saw a shadowy figure coming across the water toward them. And what they did was they got more scared and thought it was a ghost until Jesus said, relax, it's me. And as he was walking on the water and he came up to them, and he said, all is well. I just wanted to come help you in the storm. Peter says, yeah, if it's you, let me come out and walk to you. And Jesus said, sure. And so Peter steps out on the water and it holds him up. And miracle of miracles, both Peter and Jesus were walking on the water. And then Peter noticed the waves. 
He's like, oh dear. And he started to sink. And that's when Jesus lifted him back up out of the water and smiled and said, why did you lose faith and trust in me? Because Peter lost sight of Jesus for a minute. And when Jesus helped him back up out of the water, everything was fine again. And that's what Jesus wants to do for you, boys and girls. He wants you to know you can trust him when trouble comes. Just like the hedgehog trusts his design, if a hawk is coming after him, or maybe a fox wants to take a bite out of him, he can do what God gave him and send his spikes back up and ward off that hawk or that fox. And that way, he's trusting in God's design to keep him safe all night and all day. Yes, Lionel. What animals eat hedgehogs? That's a good question. Birds of prey like hawks or owls, but since they're nocturnal, mostly owls. They might be up at sunrise or sunset, and that's about when a hawk might find them. But the owls are the real enemy of the hedgehog. Some of them have talons and beaks that can tear, and that can be a problem. But the hedgehog has learned how to avoid it by running under low hedges and shrubs where the owls can't fly. And they trust their design and instinct that God gave them. I forget what that No problem. And so Jesus wants you to trust him that he has your back and will take care of you in the storm. Yes, Jackson. Yeah. His spikes protect him from owls? So you would think so, but owls, once they get a hold of them, can flip them over. And that's the problem. And owls have big talons. And so when you're running from dangers that you can't handle, just like a hedgehog maybe has trouble with an owl, you have to rely on your instincts, or he has to rely on his instincts and run under a hedge you have to rely on your ability to pray and talk to a big, more powerful friend, right? Because some problems we face in life are, of course, much bigger than we are. Scary things. And those things we can take to Jesus in prayer, can't we? And he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And he's the one who walks on water. You know, my superhero walks on water and can fly. And the only human that's ever really done that is Jesus. Jesus is the ultimate superhero, isn't he? Yeah. And he can do these things because it's the will of his Father in heaven. And that's the way it is. He wants us to trust our Heavenly Father. And our Heavenly Father has much better plans for each of you than even keeping a hedgehog safe. Oh sure, God cares about the hedgehogs too. But he loves you much, much more. And he wants you to know that no matter what troubles come your way, you can trust him always. And we're really glad that you guys came today to Kids Camp and to Critters and Creation. And I hope that you learned something more about the Creator God who has such a neat ability to design different animals. This one just happens to be not so soft and furry. By the way, the other lesson is we shouldn't be prickly like a hedgehog or porcupine. We should be more soft like a puppy or a cat. Thanks for coming.